Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the City Skylines Beginner's Guide. Today we will be looking at the Natural Disasters DLC and how cities prepare for natural disasters. And so this is actually a pretty robust DLC. It does contain a lot of stuff. There are a few things that it misses in terms of being realistic and natural disaster prep that cities actually do implement. A couple strategies that cities can utilize to better prepare themselves against natural disasters are things like dry creeks or um, sea walls, levees, uh, shelters, emergency agencies. It really depends on the size of the city and frequency of natural disasters, things like that. So areas where they experience a, a frequent amount of, say, tornadoes or hurricanes, they have a lot more procedures when it comes to disaster prep. And so let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing we're going to look at, if we go, we've, we've gotten a, a few things now with the Natural Disasters DLC. We've gotten this button up here, this Disasters button. So this button is for when you are experiencing a disaster. So you're able to click this and you can tell all of your citizens to go to the local shelters. If you have enough shelters for your whole city or if you have shelters for only certain areas, then those people will end up filling those shelters. And then you do end up having buses for those shelters as well. So you can do evacuation routes. And so a couple other things that we have had, we did unlock if we go to emergency services, you now have the ability to go into disaster services and you can place all these new buildings. We actually got quite a bit. So we have the disaster response unit, the small emergency shelter, and the large emergency shelter, as well as two radio masts. So you have a short radio mast and a tall radio mast. So these are the what are utilized whenever you have like disaster sirens. You're telling everybody to go to your shelters. You have an earthquake sensor. You have a tsunami warning buoy. You have a weather radar station, and then you have the deep space radar, which we've actually already utilized. And so a couple other things that we have unlocked, we have gotten fire helicopter depot. So if we go into the fire tab, we have gotten this one. We have also gotten a police helicopter depot. So if we go into police services, we have this police helicopter depot. We have also gotten a medical helicopter depot. So if we come in here, we also got this one as well. And these are really great facilities for your cities, especially the fire ones. They help to stop the spread of wildfires, though I think before natural disasters, you don't end up having any wildfires. A couple things that you do need to keep in mind, though. So if, let's go ahead and pause. If we go into the settings and go into options, go into gameplay, you now have a couple little tabs in here. So you have use dynamic weather you have use random disasters, which have actually clicked on so that we can um, experience a couple disasters. And then you can set the frequency for that. And one of the things for this is uh, fire spreading. So fire spreading in this game is pretty unrealistic, as you see with probably a lot of other creators. One of the things that I'll do in a lot of my other series is, is actually turn that off. And it's just so that we don't have to constantly deal with things catching fire all the time. Um, and it really has to do with your uh, level of, of trees. So if you put down a ton of trees and foliage and stuff, it's going to catch fire. It's just how the game works. The last thing we have, if we go into landscaping and disasters, we now have this disasters tab. And this is where if you wanted to actually target your city with any sort of disaster. So you could do a tornado. You can just click right there. You could do earthquakes. You could click them all over your city. Sinkholes. And the, some people will actually use these to get rid of certain buildings. So say like your you know, landfills are full, you can just do a sinkhole and get rid of them. Thunderstorms, forest fire. Um, collapse. I actually think it's collapse that works a little bit better for that. So then you also have fires, tsunamis, and a meteor strike, which the meteor strike is actually kind of cool. You can place them around the city. I've done it a few times in the past. And so now let's look at some of the ways that we can help our city out with this. I, I did end up making a few changes as well. You can kind of see this building is kind of struggling. So I want to replace this to make sure that it's okay. So I ended up upgrading this road going across the middle to a four lane tram road. And it kind of broke off our little, um, you know, horizontal pedestrian road access over here. But I felt like it was really going to, we, we were definitely missing this cross downtown kind of access over here. And I really felt like it was needed. Um, we were having a lot of traffic issues over here. So I ended up turning this road into a priority road using the junctions toolbar. So if we go in here, adjust roads, click that. I ended up clicking that, which means that all roads going onto it are going to have a stop sign. But then by also adding in this road, it's definitely a help to alleviate a lot of the traffic off of this. We were having a, a pretty big backup over here. And it was just everybody was trying to get down to this road just to get to this section of the downtown. And so we, we do lose a little bit of the walkability in there. And now people have to like cross over this road. But I feel like that would definitely be the, the best option to take. And so now let's start placing on some of these buildings. The first thing I want to do is place down probably the most important building with this. And it is the disaster response unit. So this is the building that will send out helicopters or little trucks for whenever you have a disaster. So we already have a couple things that have happened. So like this over here looks like it burned down. And so it will actually stay like this until a disaster response unit can send out a, a helicopter or a truck. And then in, once it's done, it sends out uh, some dogs and a couple people to search for survivors. 
this button will be lit up and you can rebuild it. This only happens with buildings that you actually place. Whenever it comes to growables, all it does is it marks it for rebuild so that whenever the demand is there, people will just rebuild it on their own. So let's actually pause so that we don't get a disaster and before we're ready. Um, another good example is this building over here. Same scenario. It's a zoo souvenir shop. And so it's a building we've placed. And so once we place the disaster response unit, then they'll send a helicopter search for survivors and we'll be able to rebuild that. So I want to come over here and we're going to have to delete this road first. And the reason we're going to do that is because I really want to place it in here, but we're not going to be able to do it off of that curve. So we're just going to go like this and creating that little three way actually does help with traffic a little bit. Having those four way intersections a lot of times can be bottlenecks. So now we're going to go back in here and we're going to place this right there. And I really like this. So if we go ahead and hit play now, we'll see a little helicopter appear. It's going to send out some people to those two buildings that are already having problems. So there you go. And then this is going to go all the way over to that amusement park restroom search for survivors. And then we're going to be able to rebuild. So now let's go back in here. So the next thing we need to do is start looking at our disaster coverage. So we have the possibility to basically have any disaster happen. So we want to make sure that we are better suited or prepared for any sort of disaster to happen. So I want to place a couple of these large emergency sh shelters. These both have a capacity of 10,000 each. We have a city capacity of about 60,000. You do want to be careful about the emergency routes with these because a lot of times it can just cause a lot of traffic and then by the time the natural disaster happens nobody's really even in the shelter anyways and so it's kind of tricky like they maybe they don't give you enough time to to prepare for it and so we got those two disaster shelters i know i want to do the weather radar and i think i'm going to go ahead and put it up here next to our deep space radar and this actually covers the whole city and it gives you a little bit of a, a warning for a lot of things we want to do a couple of the tsunami buoys we're going to do one right there we're gonna come over here, place one right there, probably go right there as well. Let's go over here and just place one too. That gives us again, a little bit of a warning. And then the earthquake radars, we wanna place a couple of these. You can see the sphere. This is where, uh, like the detection area. So I want to come up here and place one in our little uh, weather area. And then that's actually gonna cover quite a bit. And so now let's come over here. So we got that. If we do one over here as well, let's maybe place it like right there next to the roads so that it has access. Let's come up here let's go ahead and place this one right here and then we'll do the same thing over here all right so i ended up placing them covering the whole city and once we hit play we'll see that it's going to then color all this in and so if you do end up having some sort of lapse a lot of times it could just be something like electricity or something like that i'm gonna go ahead and pause again so now we want to go into these radio masts so i really want to get one of the radio masts right here in our little uh industrial water kind of area and then i want to get a couple more so if we come over here, let's go ahead and hit play just to see where that's going to cover it. So that should cover quite a bit. Yes, yeah, so we've already covered quite a bit of our city. So if we come up here, let's go ahead and place one in the middle of our train tracks. Place it right there and we do need to connect it up with electricity. We're definitely going to have some issues with that. So we got that now and then let's come over here and place one as well. Probably place it right off this backside next to the freeway. I feel like that's good. And then let's make sure that these are connected up with electricity because otherwise they are not going to work. All right, so now we have pretty much the whole city covered. Why did that one end? So this one should still be good. Oh, that one's not connected by electricity either. I thought that because it was so close to that, it would be. Now, so we got to go put that back in and then now we should be able to hit play and then have that cover. Let's give it a second. Yeah, there we go. Now, so our whole city is covered. We have ample room for evacuation sirens so that anybody in the city would be okay. And now let's look at some of our other buildings. So we pretty much got everything down except for more of these shelters. So we definitely need to do... So the small shel shelters, sadly, are only about a thousand people. And this is really where it would be kind of unrealistic. So in like tornado prone areas, there's like shelter codes for commercial areas. So like all these commercial buildings would have like a shelter requirement for people within the building. So like I remember being inside of like a Walmart up in Illinois and they had their bathrooms turned into shelters so that you could go in there in the event that there was a, a tornado or something like that. Because this game didn't, you know, implement that in any sort of way, you do have to go through and place some of these down. So I think we're actually going to do a couple of the bigger ones just because they're more practical. Um, So we got one right there. The sad part is, is you see that coverage that's really not going to cover too much of an area. So maybe we'll actually place a couple of these smaller ones and then decorate them up. So let's maybe let's do a couple right here in our school zone. Go like that. And that actually kind of tucks in there pretty good. And then maybe we can actually just place them down in some nice areas where they don't look too terrible. It's definitely something that you don't normally see. Like as you're driving through, you just see like a bunch of shelters on the side of the road. We'll go ahead and place these and then let's come up here. Let's go ahead and place a couple of the big ones up here since this is an industrial area. 
having these bigger ones kind of tucked in here really isn't the end of the world. So we'll come in here. Let's go ahead and do one right there as well. Let's do two. So we'll do that. And then I'm going to come through and decorate those as well. And then let's come over here and let's do, we could do some big ones. Let's, um, let's do a couple big ones right here. Yeah. You know what? That's, that's going to give us some pretty good coverage. And then we'll come in here. Let's do a couple of those. Let's come over here as well. Come over to our commercial area, do a couple. Let's do three. Then we'll do the same thing here. We'll go into our office area. And I'm really trying to just focus on commercial areas. I feel like that would be the most realistic approach for something like this. Having these like tucked in residential areas, I don't think would be uh, uh, very practical. And then let's come over here now and let's um, do a couple off of this. We'll do one right there. We'll do one right there. And I think we have pretty decent coverage. So if you go into the info panel, you do have this escape routes button now, which does show you a coverage of your overall evacuation route so you can kind of see we do have a little bit of a lapse over here so we'll place a couple right there and then let's come in here to our industrial area and do a couple in here as well because so we could even place a couple of these bigger ones why not just place a couple and then let's come in here do a couple smaller ones um and we got i mean pretty decent coverage we definitely have um some spots it's pretty decent coverage and i think people would be well versed in knowing where to go and it'd probably be like on the news like where your local shelter is and stuff like that and then you would hear the sirens and so everybody would be like, all right, we got to go. So another thing that um, we did get that I completely forgot about is the fire watchtower. And so these are super important for wildfires. You can kind of see all this red. So actual fire stations do turn your buildings blue and that is your overall fire coverage effectiveness. But if you place these down, these will help to cover those hard to reach areas that maybe your fire stations um, don't really cover as well. And so you can kind of see if we hit play, yeah, it's going to just cover so much of that. So we'll probably even come back here and place another one just because this is right off the coast and it's really going to help out with a lot of stuff. These also help with uh, open wildfire. So if you have like a big area with a lot of trees, if you just put a road out there and then one of these fire watch towers, it will get make sure that if there's a fire within that area that rescue services make it out there pretty quickly. One of the things that I don't really like about these is that they, they're not very realistic. You don't have fire watch towers in cities. Um, but for some reason, the game just really prefers you to have them, even though we do have pretty decent coverage for fire, though it does look like so we got a fire station up there. We could probably use a fire station back here. It does look like we have just a, a little lack, a little lapse in coverage back here. We'll probably go. Let's place another one back there, too. This really helps with upgrading your cities as well. Um, you definitely want to pay attention to these, especially in in industrial areas like this and then i do want to place down our helicopter depots as well we have the three that i want to place so it's nice to have these in industrial areas but also in centralized locations like i know the fire helicopter depot they send the helicopters out to the water to kind of scoop it up and help with fires and stuff and so it's definitely something you want to try to pay attention to so we have our water district down here we have like an industrial area. It would be nice if we could squeeze these in somewhere. I think if we placed them over here, they'd be kind of encroaching on the water district, um, which I don't think is uh, very appropriate. So I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a little compound in here for emergency services. I feel like this would be good. And um, there's nothing being utilized by this space. And because of it's so close to the freeway, I just don't think it's going to be a great location for a whole lot of stuff. So we'll go ahead and go like this and then let's um, curve this back and have this follow the road, have this go straight as well. And then let's do our medical one right here. Let's do our fire helicopter one in the middle. And then we will do the police helicopter one on the other side, just kind of, you know, give us some space so that they're not all right next to each other. But then it kind of provides us an opportunity to be able to maybe do some filler buildings. Um, we could do just like a small fire department in here just to kind of give it some coverage. Maybe it's like a support building. And then let's do a small little police station as well. We're not, we don't need to do a medical clinic in there. Um, but, but then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do some trees around this real quick. Just kind of clean it up. All right. So I ended up doing trees all the way around. Kind of broke them up just to make it look a little more natural. I did end up extending this road out as well. And then I put in a warehouse just to do like a little supporting warehouse for these buildings. I did end up uh, zoning in some commercial in here as well. We're still going to stay paused though so that we don't get any of those natural disasters. And then a couple buildings I actually did forget. And it's kind of funny. These were probably the most important ones. So if we at least what I was hoping for. So water, sewage, and heating tab, we now have the tank reservoir, which helps your city to store water in the event of a sudden water loss. So if you end up having, um, say your city grows too quickly and you're short on water, well then um, your city will actually pull water from these reservoirs so that you don't run into any sort of abandonment issues too quickly. 
And so these are actually really nice to have. I normally put two and they help your water districts look a little bit more realistic. But then we also have the water suction building as well. So if we come in here, we have this pumping service. And so what this does is it actually helps in the event of a flood. So let's go ahead and place this down. And then anytime that you have a flood in your city, what will happen is these will actually send out little trucks and they have little uh, like vacuums in the front and they'll help suck up water off of the streets. And so this really helps and then it kind of brings it back and then stores it in here and then pumps it back into your water supply after it's been treated. And so I do want to uh, put in some trees over here too before we move forward. You can kind of see even there's some water back here. So I think it's going to send out some trucks back there just to help uh, help these uh, people back here help the poor water district. So now let's go ahead and place some of these down and then I'll probably just do a couple little bits of foliage just to make it look a little bit better. And there we go. I really didn't do too much. I just kind of surrounded the building with trees and then did some trees over here. Um, I'm still leaving a lot of this empty because of future expansion. Like we're going to need to do some more of these. And then I think we'll end up filling in some of the space since it is kind of a bigger industrial area. And so now I think that's pretty much it. So we got evacuation routes. Oh, it looks like we uh, didn't hook this up with electricity, which would be pretty important. So let's go ahead and do that. And it looks like our electricity demand's actually getting creeping up again. Let's go ahead and check our budget and see where we're at. So our electricity is actually all the way up. So is our education. Let's see if we still need that education all the way up. So we, it looks like we could probably get away with it being a little bit lower. Let's see though, because that may tank our our elementary uh, availability pretty far. No, it actually looks pretty good and we can save a little bit of money there. We're making pretty good money, so it's really not a huge concern. I kept these up because it helps your buildings to better be better utilized. So like with uh, your garbage service, it gives more garbage trucks. Um, with these, it just increases the water availability or electricity availability. So it does look like we do need to do another power plant at some point. We could probably even put it right here, you know, looking at the space. Um, and maybe the water company kind of branched out and decided to do uh, electric as well. They saw a need in the city. And so they decided to invest in maybe a couple uh, geothermal plants. So I can see that being being good. So if we go ahead and do this, let's move this over just a smidge. So if we go like this and then we can place another one of these right there. And then that way we uh, now have quite a bit more electricity. And so the water company has branched off and it kind of helped to fill in that space a little bit too. So I think I'm going to just put in trees in here. I don't think we're going to end up putting too much more in here. All right, so I ended up doing just a little bit of trees and then I did end up zoning this in as industrial. I think we're at our limits for our canal. We're starting to get a little bit of flooding. We may even need to move one of these over here. Maybe do um, maybe do a key wall right here and then do some more of our uh, water treatment facilities. But I think for right now, that looks pretty good. Um, I like the tanks in here. I like the water pumping service. I think it looks a lot better. And so now let's come over here. I think we pretty much got everything. So we got the evacuation routes. We got earthquake sensors. We have the tsunami buoys. We have our weather radar. We have all of that. So I think now we can probably let it play and see what sort of uh, natural disasters we encounter. So let's actually come in here and we want to bump up our frequency just a little bit just to see. So if we random disaster and frequency, let's go to the middle and see what it gives us. Man, we're really, I think we're gonna have to move one of these real quick. So if we, let's go ahead and fix this real quick. I, I just don't feel good leaving that. So if we grab this, let's go ahead and smooth it out just a section right there. And then what we're gonna do is just put in a small key wall. Let's go right there. And then let's see if we can curve this in just a bit. And then what we can do is actually move these. So if we go like that, now let's grab this, move this over here. So now we will let this flood out real quick so that we can build in a road. And this should really help out with this flooding a lot. Um, you can kind of see the canal is already getting much lower. And then we'll probably just put in some industrial in there and just some generic industrial. We do need to connect these up with power though. And then now that it's flooded a little bit, we should be able to come in here, do our road across, and then let's go ahead. Yeah, let's connect it up right there. And then we'll make this just another part of our compound, just a water expansion. Maybe they purchased this land to expand this out even further. So I think we will come in here and just go like that. We don't really have a lot of industrial demand right now, but it's just gonna help it to look uh, a little bit better. But I think this looks good already. I, I like the canals. Um, and so now we're just kind of waiting for our first disaster so we can see how our evacuation routes work. Oh, we can kind of see, I can show you guys this too. So now that this has been serviced, search for survivors, we can hit rebuild. It just rebuilds the building. So we'll come over here, do the same thing, and just don't mind the ground over here. It has to do with the de decals and the trees. It's a glitch in the game. Um, I did, at the time, install Service Painter to get rid of it. You can kind of see it's just having a lot of problems with it. Okay, so the base settings of having disasters on with random disasters set, the random disaster frequency set at the middle, really doesn't provide a whole lot of natural disasters. And so it really helps you to feel a little more comfortable playing with disasters on because it's not just going to throw 
a bunch of disasters at you all the time. In the meantime, though, what I would like to do is actually just set a disaster coming our way. So what we're going to do is go down and we're going to hit this disasters tab within the landscaping tab. And I want to have a tornado come through here. And so we're actually just going to hit this section right here. I don't want to get too crazy and have it just come all the way through. And so now that we've got that, you can kind of see. So tornado coming inbound. It's already been detected by our weather service. What we want to do is go ahead and hit this activate all shelters. And so I do want that to go. And what that's going to do is close down a lot of our buildings and it's going to try to shuttle as many people as possible into our disaster shelters. And so you can kind of see if you click on these as well, they have water, food and power storage. And so it is currently evacuating people. If we had evacuation buses, then it would be sending them out. I don't particularly like the buses. I think they get stuck a lot and they don't tend to work as well. Um, a lot of times your disasters end up hitting the city before it has time to really shuttle everybody. But you can kind of see a lot of our services have been shut down and so all of our uh, pedestrian areas are now saying that there's no garbage service point because there's a disaster coming which it's kind of interesting i wonder if these buildings are going to go abandoned now um, i wonder if they kind of thought about that with the natural disasters like hey it's going to shut down our service points um, and so all these buildings are going to go abandoned that'll be interesting to see but since we have a pretty powerful earthquake let's see if we can get a decent amount of people evacuated up oh, so it is coming in so it looks like it's coming from the other side i was kind of hoping it would come from the <laughs> from the water side so this is actually going to be pretty heavy uh tornado it's going to go across our freeway and this does destroy the roads too so you have to go through and kind of uh, repair everything and so let's go ahead and bump up the speed and see where this goes Uh, so it actually destroyed quite a bit. It does look like maybe it's taking a turn towards our theme park now, or maybe it's just dying in the water. Oh yeah, so there we go. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump out of here, and we are going to turn off disasters since we have a ton of repair to do. So we're going to go in here. We're going to hit that random disasters. Let's go ahead and disable fire spreading as well. We don't really need that. And so you can kind of see we have a ton of problems. So we can actually uh, release citizens and then I think you get a disaster report too. So you'll, you'll get this open disaster report. And so aftermath of recent tornado, citizens lost 514, building dis buildings destroyed 65, roads destroyed, man, that's quite a bit. So uh, 3,992 meters, and then train tracks destroyed 277 meters. That's our Metro. And so now we can go ahead and hit okay. And let's um, hit play because we need our disaster buildings to start uh, our disaster uh, response unit to start going through here. And so what you can do is go into your roads and you can basically be selected on any road and you just need to hover over that with the upgrade tool and it'll say repair. And so what you need to do this first because your disaster response unit uh, requires roads. And so this is super important. You can kind of see we even got a power plant so we want to make sure to rebuild that right away and then reconnect any power lines that we had so like that got destroyed we don't doesn't look like we have any other power issues at this moment it was just those emergency service buildings which that's super important we definitely need to get those out so we got the medical helicopters flying off we got the police the fire department helicopters flying off and it does look like we need to upgrade our highway as well our repair highway so we're going to come in here and we're going to do the same thing we hit that upgrade tool and so now we have access going through here and so we need to go through our regular roads now so let's come all the way down we need to repair that repair that repair that looks like we got these ones messed up too we'll repair those repair that repair that go like this and so we got a little stretch right there as well Ooh, we got a couple pedestrian roads in here too and then for our metro tracks what we need to do is go into our metro tab choose that track and then go to the upgrade tool again do the same thing just repaired all the way down and then once you get it repaired the the metro should start running through again which is good yeah it did perfect and so let's go ahead uh, we didn't want to upgrade that i thought it needed to be repaired and then same with your paths you got to go through all of your paths and repair as much as possible and that actually didn't really destroy as much as i was kind of prepared for it to destroy and so you'll see these little blue icons so this is similar to the repair or the rebuild icon that you get for buildings that you place but what this does is basically just marks it for rebuilding. So now once the demand comes back, these buildings will be rebuilt on. You can kind of see a lot of these buildings are already being rebuilt on. But then um, like this warehouse over here, we need to actually rebuild. And so all of our roads are repaired. All of our metros are repaired. All of our paths are repaired. This actually looks pretty good. That was uh, extremely fast. So our response, our disaster response unit already went out, sent a bunch of helicopters. They sent out the 
trucks as soon as we got the the roads repaired all the trucks went through here and we have already pretty much got everybody serviced we kind of got lucky on that one because it came through this area came through here it destroyed a lot of buildings but it, it didn't like go sideways like say had it turned in here and gone through all these buildings it would have been a lot tougher and so it's actually kind of fun um, placing down all the little shelters and everything and placing them around your city and, and then decorating them up. And I do wish that there were some more things that you could do. Like one of the things you can do is um, go in here, go to your water structures and place some, some flood walls. I've used these in the past in some of my builds. You could put these like maybe next to your canals or off into the ocean a little bit. You could do little sea walls. Like say if you did a harbor, if we had this unlocked, Maybe we could do like a seawall out here that would just protect against a tsunami. You can kind of see it definitely repairs them pretty quickly. If you keep natural disasters on though, it does hit your city quite frequently. And if you do have it kind of plow through larger sections, it can create kind of a problem. Go ahead and let me know if you guys have any questions. I definitely, I'm on the fence about this DLC. It's something that is very common for city builders. Like going back to SimCity, you know, you could have Godzilla kind of roam through your city or tornadoes and stuff. It's something that I normally play with the off, I don't I don't play with natural disasters on. Um, I do use a lot of the buildings though. Like I think the helicopter depots are definitely worth it. Like having the fire helicopter depot really comes in handy quite a bit. Same with the medical one, as well as the water treatment stuff. So having the tank reservoirs and your pumping service, um, because flooding does happen outside of this DLC. Flooding happens anytime you work with water. So there are a couple bonuses to it. Is it really high up on my list for DLCs? No, I'll leave that up to you. You know, it's definitely whether or not you find it interesting um and so let me know in the comments what you guys think if you enjoyed this episode you will definitely enjoy the episode on your screen and thank you so much for watching i'll catch you guys on the next one